Okay, I've got the first target. It's not spot on 300 yards, but it's 297. I'm going to dial up to my green mark, which is my 300 mark. Grab one of my special bullets, 67 grains. And I'll probably hold, the wind's actually quite gusty again, it's about five, 10 mile an hour. I will probably just hold a fraction, as in probably about an inch to the left. It's a rock up there, hopefully we can record this. So I haven't got enough projectiles to waste. Now you can see it's sort of a, a V, with the bottom of the V being on the right hand lower corner. I will aim an inch to the left and a fraction under, half, probably quarter of an inch under. See what happens. Well, I've just checked the video and that shot was right on the money, right on that V uh, where I thought it was, well, I was hoping it would hit. So I've now arranged another little rock out at 400 yards, actually it's 398 corrected distance. So I'm going to dial up to the 400 mark and we'll see. Now this one I'll hold, if this wind is actually coming across quite solid, I will actually hold probably two inches to the left but I have to make that decision as we shoot because the wind can drop pick up drop down uh, obviously can do a variety of things so we'll see if we can get this shot recorded as well I'm going to aim right on it for height and that inch to the left maybe an inch and a half left to center Well, I've just had a look at the video and that actually was imperfectly in line, but it's probably one notch lower than um, it should be. So what I'm going to do is just take the ballistic turret apart, move the yellow dot back up, probably one. That should now be just about right on the money for 400 yards. Look, it was very, very close. That's sort of, I'm being pretty pedantic here, but I have got a few cartridges left, so I'm going to test them out. Uh, I'm just starting to think that this is actually slower than I anticipated and I'm actually going to move the the 500 one more. Now this is where it tests you. Now that wind is coming from right to left where before it's been left to right all morning and at about the same consistency and you don't know what that wind's going to be like up further so it pays to have a good look through your scope and just see what the grass, the leaves, whatever you can pick. Okay, so what I might do, seeing this wind is, it's sort of not that strong anyway. I might just hold dead center on it. Arranged another rock up there and uh, I've got the spotting scope locked onto it. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. It's, uh, I'll put a little mark on it when I get home so you can actually pick the rock that I'm actually going for. But it's right on 499, 500 corrected. I must admit the clarity on this scope is really, really good. Now the rock's got a little bit of a dark face to it. It's only, well, only small, it's about the size of an area you'd want to hit if you're shooting at a deer. Now I will actually try the set trigger again. Get myself locked in. Well 
that's about it for the testing of this rifle today and obviously I'm pretty happy with it. It shoots extremely well. For a sporter weight rifle um, to do sort of a clover leaf group, um, yeah, it's lively. But it's not going to be, probably the amount of shots I've fired today would be probably more than I was shooting a year or two years out of a deer hunting rifle, or especially a samba deer hunting rifle. And this is what its job's going to be. And in a couple of weeks, or three weeks, we're heading back into the high country, and we're hopefully we're going to get into a little bit more open country. And this rifle will come into its own, with, especially with those cross gully shots and stuff like that. But just to sum up on the basic layout of the rifle, it's a standard Tika T3 as far as the action. Uh, it's a blued lightweight barrel. It's in a 7mm rem mag. I've had the option of the set trigger uh, when I purchased it, and I've saved this before. If you want a set trigger, make sure you order it with the rifle because it's probably about $300 more when you buy the, that's $300 Australian, when you buy the trigger with the rifle but you can double that cost if you buy it or want to buy it later. It's set at about four to five ounces in the set position and about one and a half pounds, maybe a fraction more in the unset. Crisp as, as uh, most Seiko and Tika triggers. The stock is the biggest change. Um, and it's funny, it's the first carbon fiber that I've ever bedded, the first carbon fiber stock that I've ever had. Um, but it actually, it's, got a quite a good feel to it it's not it's not slippery as you might expect and it's um it's it's actually it's not like a real grippy sort of surface but it's still very very functional it's actually shot well the the rifle is nowhere near as lively as i expected it to be uh scope it's another swarovski you know enough said about these but this is a z5 three and a half to 18 by 44 ballistic turret which I've just spent the time in dialing it up and I'm pretty confident with it so far out to 500 yards. Uh, in the long term I may and when I get it dialed and tuned in a little bit better and see what it's like at different altitudes I will probably get a Swarovski custom ballistic turret made up which you basically order online and then get it shipped to your dealer. So obviously I'm pretty happy so yeah, it's going to be at seven pounds as you're looking at it there. It's going to be a really good all round, hard hitting, long range Samba Slayer. So let's see what happens over the next few weeks.